along with us, a witness to his resurrection. He understood, sorry, a witness to his resurrection, so they nominated two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who is also known as Justice, and Matthias. They prayed, Lord, you never once deepest thoughts and desires. Show us clearly which one you have chosen from among these two to take the place of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned away to go to his own place. When they cast lots, the lot fell on Matthias. He was added to the 11 apostles. When Pentecost Day arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound from heaven, like the howling of a fierce wind, filled the entire house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be individual flames of fire alighting on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were pious Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard this sound, a crowd gathered. They were surprised. They were, actually, they were mystified because everyone heard them speaking in their native languages. They were surprised and amazed, saying, look, aren't all the people who are speaking? Galileans, every one of them. How then can each of us hear them speaking in our native language, Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, as well as residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the regions of Libya bordering Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the mighty works of God in our own languages. They were surprised and bewildered. They were, they were all surprised and bewildered. Some asked each other, what does this mean? Others jeered at them, saying they're full of new wine. Peter stood with the other 11 apostles. He raised his voice and declared, Judeans and everyone living in Jerusalem know this. Listen carefully to my words. These people aren't drunk, as you suppose. After all, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. Rather, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, that's cool. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young will see visions. Your elders will dream dreams. Even upon my servants, men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. Blood and fire and a cloud of smoke. Sorry. And they will prophesy. I will cause wonders to occur in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and a cloud of smoke. The sun will be changed into darkness and the moon will be changed into blood before that great and spectacular day of the Lord comes and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Judeans, sorry, fellow Israelites, Jesus the Nazarene was a man whose credentials God proved to you through miracles, wonders, and signs which God performed through him among you. You yourselves know this. In accordance with God's established plan and foreknowledge, he was betrayed. You, with the help of wicked men, had Jesus killed by nailing him to a cross. God raised him up. God freed him from death's dreadful grip since it was impossible for death to hang on to him. David says about him, I foresaw that the Lord was always with me. There, because he is at my right hand, I won't be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad. My tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my body will live in hope because you won't abandon me to the grave nor permit your Holy One to experience decay. You have shown me the paths of life. Your presence will fill me with happiness. Brothers and sisters, I can speak confidently about the patriarch David. He died and was buried. And his tomb is with us to this very day because he was a prophet. He knew that God promised him with a solemn pledge to seat one of his descendants on his throne. <clears throat> 